Hey, welcome to my channel. My name's Tony, and this is another episode of Real At Home Barbecue. And I'm about to show you the uh, easiest, most simple way of how to build a fire in the firebox of your offset smoker. And I'm also going to show you how to manage your temperature properly without creating a lot of that nasty white smoke that makes your food taste bad. So. Uh, uh, sit back, relax, and check this out. And also, don't forget to subscribe. I've got some new stuff coming up pretty soon. Matter of fact, I got a new smoker on the way pretty soon. A new offset that's uh, it's big, it's bad, and uh, I can't wait to show you. It's going to be awesome, and uh, it's going to be in your reach too. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. So don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, let me know what you think. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, throw a comment in the comment section. Uh, feel free to ask any questions you got. I appreciate you being here very much. So check this out. Here we go. Okay, I've got a Weber charcoal chimney starter here. If you don't have one of these, um, recommend you get one or something like it. It makes lighting charcoal real easy. I'm going to flip this over and uh, this is just the uh, drawer to my firebox on this smoker. I've got a waste bin full of garbage paper here. Just uh, instead of putting it in the shredder, I put it in my little waste bin. Use whatever you want. Newspaper works great. Paper bags work great. You can rip off the paper from your charcoal bag. Magazines, junk mail, whatever you want. Just put a little bit of paper in there, no oil or anything like that. Hold that and flip it over. Put the handle this way on purpose. I'm going to put, today we're using Kingsford charcoal. I'm going to only put in about half of a chimney full of charcoal. Okay. There's a reason I'm only doing half. The reason is I don't want too much charcoal in there because it's going to uh, make the temperature a little harder to manage because there will be more burning product. I don't want that. So that's it. I've got paper on the bottom and the, uh, the charcoal chimney starter. I got charcoal inside. Got a little propane torch here, whatever it is. And uh, use a match, use a lighter, whatever you want. Gotta light the fire down here. That paper is now burning. And as that paper burns, it's going to light the charcoal on fire. In about 15 minutes, that charcoal is going to be ready to use. Okay, you can see now flames are coming out of the top of the chimney. And uh, there's only just a couple of coals on top that are that are still black. Everything else in there is fully lit up. So I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to go. This particular smoker comes with a couple of grates here that you can actually use to cook on if you just have charcoal down in the box here. I'm going to take those and get them out of the way. I'm going to put on some high temperature protecting barbecue gloves because this can is really, really, really hot. Okay, pick this up and close this. And I'm gonna dump this in here. Easy peasy. Okay. Next step. I'm going to arrange these coals a little bit. I like to have them off to the right side of the box, right next to the vent. So there's a little bit of space between the fire and the main cooking chamber. Ok, 
Okay. I've got a nice bed of charcoal that's burning there. This is creating a lot of heat. So I'm going to put down inside the box, I'm going to be adding wood. This is cherry wood. I'm going to put one piece, whoops, there's a stray sharp away over there. I put one piece of this cherry wood way over here, away from the fire. I put that there to let that piece of wood warm up really, really well. It's going to be really, really, really hot. I want the wood really hot because when wood is really, really hot, it catches on fire very quickly so that when I'm ready, I can take this piece of wood, put it on top of the fire, and it's going to light up really, really quickly. I'm also going to add a couple pieces of wood right on top of the coal here like this. Actually, I'm going to put in three because this one is pretty small. Put that one there too. Now, if you watch, this wood's going to actually smolder for a little bit as it catches fire. We don't want smoldering wood. And uh, that's going to kind of take us into our next topic, which is temperature management. I'm not going to manage the temperature by choking off the air supply to, to, to squash the fire. I want this fire to burn as hot as it can burn. I'm going to control the temperature by controlling how much fuel is burning over here. So the way you control temperature without creating a lot of really thick white smoke is by controlling the size of the fire. So this about a half a, a can of charcoal plus those three pieces of wood is going to make the temperature very high. It's going to probably be close to 400 degrees by the temperature that's on the top of the uh, cooking chamber over here. If it's 400 degrees at the top of the cooking chamber, it's going to be more like 350 degrees down at the grate level down here. Let me show you how to measure that. And um, if you want to have a, a lower temperature, just have a, a smaller pile of wood burning. So if, I have, if you have too much charcoal in the pile, and it's harder to get it down to that low temperature. So if you want to really keep a super low temperature down like 180, 200 degrees, you're going to want just a little bit of charcoal, maybe even a, just a quarter of a can of charcoal and, uh, you know, like one or two pieces of wood to start. I like to start high. I like to start by getting this uh, cooking chamber really, really hot so I can make sure it's clean and sanitary and ready to go. And I let that, I let that, uh, pile of wood burn down so that I can um, then let the temperature fall to where I want it to be and then I just carefully add just enough wood every so often. It might be every 15 minutes, it might be every 30 minutes or 45 minutes, it just kind of depends on the wood that I'm burning and the temperature and it also depends on the uh, environment that I'm in. It's 100 degrees today so it's pretty easy to keep a really low 200 degree temperature when it's 100 degrees outside. Um, but if it was 45 degrees outside, I would probably need to have a slightly bigger fire. And uh, we might need to feed it a little bit more often. If it was really windy, that would also make a difference. So you have to be able to adjust your fire based on your conditions, what the weather's like, what, uh, what size of a smoker you have, um, you know, there's a lot of different factors in, in this particular case. If with this smoker here, I like pieces of wood that are about that big. Sometimes I also just use the little chunks that are the size of an apple. And, um, and I just have to add a piece of wood every, like I said, every 15 minutes or th every 30 minutes, depending. And um, that's how it works on this smoker. Your smoker might be different. If you have a bigger unit, you would use bigger pieces of wood. And um, you would probably add a little less often. Okay, so see how the wood is uh, catching on fire really nicely there? It's still not burning as hot as it can burn. I still see a lot of smoke coming from this piece right in there. 
So that's just gonna keep getting hotter and hotter and hotter as the temperature builds. So I'm just leaving the lid open right now for a little while, but really this is basically it. This is how you build a fire in your firebox. And um, I'm going to, I'm even gonna open this drawer, drawer over here a little bit. Your, your smoker might have a door that swings open. Some, in some cases you can leave those doors wide open. Um, in this case here with this one, I just like to open that drawer a little bit to allow some more air to be able to flow in there. So it looks like it's burning hot enough now to where I'm gonna go ahead and close this lid. Now that I've closed the lid, you see the smoke is starting to come out of there. Notice how the smoke is not super visible. That's a good thing. That's what I'm looking for. When the smoke is thick and white, then, this, then it makes your food taste really smoky. Not, not the good kind of smoky, but like the ashtray kind of smoky. And you know, if, you, if that's what you like, it's great. You know, it's personal preference. You can choke off the air, do whatever you want. Um, I personally like to have that wood, that light, light smoky, woody flavor added to the food. So I don't want that thick white smoke. Um, generally that's considered bad smoke or dirty smoke. What you want is, um, or generally what, what's preferred is a thin blue smoke. You get that thin blue smoke by having really, really hot burning wood. See, it's, it's full burning right now. And it's gonna be, the temperature's gonna rise up really quickly. So I'm gonna close the main, choking, uh, main um, cooking chamber lid now. It's closed up. And there's the, uh, the vent on top. It is wide open. And uh, there's plenty of hot air coming out of there. And with that hot air is the smoke and that flavor from the wood and the charcoal. And it's hard to see. I'll back up a little bit. Maybe you can see it better that way. Hmm, not really. That means that the wood is burning really, really good. And you'd be surprised the flavor that you get from that. It's not the smoke that you're looking for. It's that it's actually just that really, really hot air that's being flavored by the wood that's burning. Notice the temperature gauge is climbing. And it's going to keep on climbing. All right, I'm going to let this temperature climb for a little while and I'm going to come back. All right, a couple things to show you here. As I said it was going to do. The temperature is over 400 degrees. We're at about almost 450 degrees now. I want to show you something else. See that? That ugly white smoke. I just wanted to show you that's an example of what you don't want. Well, maybe you do, but I don't want that really thick white smoke. And um, in the firebox, I'll show you one of the reasons why I have that thick white smoke right now is because I um, had a couple scrap pieces of bark that I wanted to get rid of that fell off the wood that I cut and uh, so I just threw that in there and that's what happens. See the fire? Big fire! That's hot. Really, really hot. That's going to make my camera shut off if I get too close. There. I'm going to let that burn down. I'm going to let that fire burn way down to where it's a little pile and um, as that happens, the temperature will fall. As you can see here, it's uh, really high, 460. So uh, I'm gonna let that burn down and I'll talk a little bit more about how to control the temperature. Okay, it's been a little bit and uh, things have calmed down quite a bit. Notice that you can barely see the thin blue smoke that's coming out of the stack there. Temperature gauge up top is reading 360 degrees and uh, I'll let you have a look at what's happening inside the firebox notice that pile of wood is burnt down pretty significantly now there's just a little pile of charcoal still there and a uh, couple pieces of wood that are that are pretty much burnt away and they're still producing quite a bit of heat and i've got my backup piece of wood over there it's nice and black and super hot ready to be used now tell me control the temperature i added 
my um, probes. Now there's there's you gotta you gotta know what your temperature is if you're gonna control it. So obviously um, most of your offset smokers come with a gauge installed in the lid like this one. Just know that the temperature reading on that gauge is gonna be because it's high is gonna be um, much higher than what the temperature reading is at your grate. That that's pretty normal because heat goes from down there and heat rises. It comes up and it fills the top really heavily and it comes out your stack there and your smoke is going to flow through this chamber and everything and come out that stack there. But heat rises so that gauge is going to be higher than what the temperature is down here. So keep that in mind when you're cooking your food. If you've got a, a rig that's got a couple shelves in it like, like most do, uh, the temperature down here is going to be a little bit lower than the temperature at the higher shelf. So just keep that in mind when you're cooking your food, okay? So uh, some some come with additional uh, temperature gauges like one down here one down here um, you can also just install them yourself drill a hole in there and put you can put gauges in all you want uh, me personally I like to use a uh, the, the probe the digital probe thermometers so I can just kind of stick the probe wherever I want I have a couple different ones and here's here's one that I have here and um, the way these work pretty simple there's just a little wire that's attached to this guy here and you run it under your lid over here inside you've got the wire I'm not trying to get too close because it makes my camera shut off. And there's a little clip here that attaches to the grate and you just stick a little probe right to the clip. And the tip of that probe is what reads the temperature. So keep in mind, if you have a grill full of food, you've got a couple racks of ribs or a bunch of chicken or whatever, if you let the tip of that probe touch the meat that you've got on your grill or whatever food you got on there, it might be reading the temperature of that food <laughs> and it's going to throw your, your temperature off. So um, don't let that touch your food or you'll be maybe trying to add a bunch of wood over there trying to get your temperature up, not realizing that your temperature is super high. So uh, anyways, that thing just sends the signal to your little guy here. And this one's saying right now 257. That's because the door was just open. And then this is a little remote one that I can uh, take with me. So that's what I like about these is I can keep this one with me because I don't stand here next to my smoker all day long when I'm doing an 8 or 10 or 14 hour cook. Uh, I'm doing other stuff. And so I just take that thing with me so I can monitor the temperature and come and adjust as I need. Now how you adjust, without making that smoke really thick and white, how you adjust is just by controlling how much uh, wood or how much charcoal or how much lump coal or, or whatever combination you have. Um, how much you have burning inside that box. If you have a big pile that's making a lot of flames, you're going to have a really high temperature. You saw that just a little bit ago. The temperature is coming down. It's actually, for what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to want a little bit higher. I'm going to want a temperature of about 350 degrees at the grate. And, um, but if you're doing uh, something really low, you know, if you want to maintain a 225 degree temperature then uh, I would let this burn down a little bit more because right now it's reading 298 so that pile is obviously producing too much heat so if you've got too much heat um, the the normal way to deal with too much heat is simply just to let this pile burn down that's it just just let it burn down and um, the heat will will, dr will drop as that pile burns down um, another thing you can do if you have too much heat is you could literally just remove some of the material if it's possible. Kind of difficult with this piece because it's already starting to fall apart. A lot of the heat is coming from all the embers left over here and all that and that pile of charcoal there. So keep in mind if you want to run a lower heat and you're going to be using a combination of charcoal and lump coal, you're going to want to um, be careful. Don't don't use too much charcoal or too much lump coal in combination with your wood because it's going to be harder to get that temperature down lower because uh, especially charcoal it burns a lot longer than wood does and it's going to take a while for it to burn away enough to where the temperature comes down um, in in a real emergency like I said though you can you can just take you know if you got a burning log in there you can take it out be, but you have to have somewhere to put it okay be careful don't just take it out and throw it on the ground. If you have another barbecue nearby, um, you know, kettle grill or something you can put on, that's fine. Or if you got a burn pit nearby or a heavy duty, you know, 
a burn can then you know just be safe don't just chuck it out there and catch anything on fire and uh, make sure you're protected make sure you've got something long enough to be able to deal with it but uh, but that's one way you can deal with it is you can literally just remove some of the burning material if you need to um, just depends on your your smoker how you how you deal with that if you want the temperature to go up pretty simple just add some more charcoal or add some more lump coal or add some more wood like I'm about to do I just I want the temperature to go up in this case so I'm just gonna put that there remember I said it was gonna light on fire instantly there it is lit on fire instantly that's gonna bring that temperature up right away As a matter of fact I'm gonna go ahead throw another piece over here get it on standby there we go position it so it's not gonna catch on fire right away okay temperature is gonna go up now uh, in a real like you know hail mary here your temperature is too high and you're afraid you're gonna do some damage to your cook um, another simple little trick is you just just open your lid there open the lid and see look at that hot air and smoke coming out if that hot air and smoke coming out it's going to be uh, reducing the temperature inside your cooking chamber so you don't just stand here and hold it like I'm doing right now but get a little block of wood you know, I'm sure you got some wood or a piece of charcoal or something laying around <laughs> here you're using it here get a little block of wood stick it in between the bottom and the and the, and the lid and uh, just prop that open a little bit and keep an eye on your temperature if it's a real emergency and you, you didn't pay attention you're 400 degrees of the grate and you're trying to run it at 225 just open the lid and let the heat out it only takes a few seconds and uh, the temperature will drop pretty quickly and uh, you know deal with your fire in the in the meantime if you need to or whatever you got to do but um, just open the lid let the heat out but uh, if you just stick some wedge something in there to keep the lid open a little bit if it's if it's really too high and you you know don't want to take any burning material out of there um, that's always an option for you but really that that's it that's how you control the fire so this is um, very simply been how to create how to build a fire in your offset smoker firebox i showed you how to do that uh, very simply just with some either some lump coal or some charcoal in that chimney starter throw down that little bed of coals and then uh, throw down a couple pieces of logs put some wood on top of that and uh, there you go you've got your fire you're, you're rocking and rolling and then also how to control your temperature in your offset smoker like i said very simple just control how much uh how much stuff you got burning in the box over there and um, you know if you got a really big box and a really big smoker you need more material to get your to maintain your temperature if you have a smaller one this one's not very big um, so you have a smaller amount of, of uh, material there be careful you don't want to put wood splits in there that are really long and really big and really heavy if you've got um, a small smoker uh, so you have to use um, wood that is the appropriate size for your smoker maybe you just stick with those little uh you know wood chunks that they sell at uh, hardware stores like home depot or whatever those were great um i use those quite a bit also and um uh that's it okay so hey thanks for watching appreciate you very very much and um if you like this video give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you don't like it you know that's cool too and don't forget to subscribe i really appreciate that i really appreciate you being here and uh thanks a lot take care